This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. You are what you watch. Hello, my name is Harriton Watko. Welcome to our program. Now, every week I do different types of shows. Let's see, sometimes we try and do inventors. Of course, I love politics and I get right into it. And then we do disasters or what we call current events. But hang on. There's always the good news and there's always that side of the news that is equally important and a priority in our daily lives. What we do is we need to learn of these issues because if you and I are not in the know, there's no way we're going to be able to appreciate anything around us. Politics is the concept of addition. But you see, politics was created not necessarily for what you and I think it is, which is basically destructive, but not necessarily. It is how we put people together, the culture, the discipline of the people, the leadership, and how we put nation building together. We're not going to talk about politics per se, but one way or the other, it is related. At this point, we will talk about opportunities and the good things. The good things that are happening to our country, you may not be aware of. Just last week, there were some current events that were written on the major bulletins. It has gone around, I guess, the same way on um, network TV, about the European Union having to come in and develop further what we call stage two of Malampaya, I know when I mention Malampai, everyone goes sour. What happened? The electricity is going to go off and prices are going to go up. We're not going to talk about those issues. We're going to talk about the sustainability of the Malampai platform, which has come to all of us, at least right in our faces, all of us realizing, hey, thank God we have Malampai, 40% of all our electric. Imagine when this goes down, everybody goes haywire, especially the power barges. Now, if only to sustain, maintain, and to keep using this to complement our electric bills, we would be all happy. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. With us, we have Ambassador Guy Ledoux. Let's see if I'm pronouncing that properly. Ambassador, is that correct? Guy perfect. Ledoux. It's, it's French. Perfect. You're yes. French. Yes, okay. I'm French. He's with us to explain to us, to help us understand stage two of Malampaya. But even before we go to the projects, the current events, let's find out who Ambassador Guy Ledoux is. Hello, Ambassador. Thank you for being on the show. Good afternoon. So I guess we're out in the open. You're French. Oh, my gosh. The country of love. Is that correct? It's like the Philippines, one way or the other. That's correct, but I would like to be seen as representing the European Union. So yes. for the time being, I forget about my nationality. Okay, never mind. The, yes, the Union, the European Union. Now, I understand the European Union, which is now represent, it used to be the European Commission. This is not just a new development or partnership. This partnership has been going on since Cory Aquino, uh, President Cory's time, where this was signed into some type of an arrangement and partnership, correct? It correct. was the European Commission then, which has now developed and changed into the European Union. Well, the European Commission is, the, is one institution. It's basically is the name of the European Union government. The European and Union government. government. Okay, yes. that's the commission. We have about 20,000 uh, civil servants from all 28 European countries who work together. What a big bureaucracy. In <laughs> Brussels. Yes, but for, for a group of countries that represent 500 million people, this is, a very, this is a very small bureaucracy, I must tell you. God, half of China, right there, right there. Yes, exactly. exactly. So the EU is the governing body. The commission that does all the bureaucracy is the EU. 
EEC, which is still ongoing today. The European Commission is still existing. That is one of our institutions, but we also have the European Parliament. We have a European Parliament, and by the way, we have election this year. And we have the European Court of Justice, who makes sure that the, the legislation which is passed by the European Commission and approved by the European Parliament is respected by European citizens and European member states. Is there a distinction? Is there are strong similarities to what they call the federal system in the United States, the United States of America. Can we say this is the United States of Europe? Not yet, because of the federal uh, financial institutions or central banks. Ex yes? Exactly. We are, we are not as, as uh, developed as the United States, I would mm -hmm. say, but there is a high level of shared sovereignty. We share a uh, common policy. We have common policy, for example, for agriculture policy, for our trade policy. Mm -hmm. If I mention the trade policy, when we negotiate a uh, trade agreement with the United States, or yes. hopefully in the future with the Philippines, is the European Commission, meaning mm -hmm. the European uh, Union uh, government, who right. negotiates with the Philippines. It's not individual not, member not states. Members anymore. You don't have France, Germany, or Italy yeah. negotiating trade agreement with the Philippines. It's done at the EU level. So mm. there is a level, uh, there is a certain level of shared sovereignty. Shared so sovereignty. It's, yes. So it's not as uh, deep, let's say, as, as a federation, but we are quite advanced towards a federation, yeah. Like, for example, uh, in layman terms for, uh, for our viewers, when you say um, European community and shared sovereignty, the European Union, uh, we, don't, we can't go to the EU and say, can I have a visa for the EU? You still have to go, because now, for example, we have to go through Schengen, correct? Schengen. Schengen. Schengen we yeah. go through the Schengen. That's the same thing, is it? There's a difference. Well, the EU is a very complex uh, uh, body, but it's true that with Sch Schengen, basically, is, is the EU visa. It's the EU visa. But you okay. have, you have uh, some of our member states. Not, not all. Yes, not all of yes. them. <laughs> okay, there's but the confusion. Let's say we, you have, out of the 28 countries, you have certainly 25 who are members of, of Schengen. Yeah, close, you, 23, you have, okay, 25. Good. 25. You, you, yes, because it's, it's quite mixed, mm. but you have countries like, like uh, uh, the UK, uh, Ireland, I think Romania, Bulgaria, who are not members of Schengen. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you get a Schengen visa, you can travel in, in quite a... Well, most, yeah. most part of Switzerland the and all the others yes. all around. Although Switzerland is not a member of the European Union, but they are a member of Schengen for the time being. Mm, for the time being. So it's still evolving and it's creating some type of federal government and it's doing it slow, prudently but surely to make sure things are w well within the European countries that are clustered together. Well, I mean, you know, today, in today's world, when you have giants like China, India and the United States, yes. Yes. One European uh, country doesn't have much weight on the world stage. But 500 uh, million people, Without 28 a countries, Without a doubt. and being the largest economy in the world, I mean yeah, larger the than the United yeah. States, about three times the size of uh, the Chinese economy. So uh, combined. 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 Yeah, but I can talk about a combined economy because, as I just said regarding trade matters, mm. we talk with one voice. Yes, There's one, one voice that negotiates with China, with the US, with Japan, uh, or with the Philippines, with any of our partners at the WTO, is the EU who, is the, who represents the, the whole Not of the EU. The separate. No. It's interesting how history, only 100 years back, or two, going back even further, the EU was basically the developed and first world, only first world country that was a superpower, as well as the world powers that dominated basically the world. Well, Interestingly I'm, enough. I'm not entirely uh, in agreement with you. I mean, uh, okay. uh, if, if you, I don't know about 100 years ago, but let's go 200, 200 years, years ago. 200 years. 200 years ago, you had, you had economically, you had uh, China was a giant. Right. If you look at the GDP of China. China was already a giant 200 years ago? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. It's, uh, my perception is totally wrong. It's, it's only when uh, you started to have the Industrial Revolution yes. that... that uh, started in, in the UK and then expanded in America, in, in, in America that uh, China didn't follow the same mm -hmm. uh, path. And, and today, of course, they are, they are catching up and, and they, will, they will be back basically uh, having their share of the world GDP, right, uh, right. which is uh, commensurate to the size of the country again.
Uh, let's, go, let's go to you, Ambassador. When did you join the, um, the European Union? I joined the European Union about uh, 25 years ago. Gee, and you're a long timer in this. Uh, so you really know your you really know your stuff, then. Yeah, but as as I as I told you, I was born in the city of Strasbourg, and Strasbourg is a sort of symbol of the reconciliation between uh, France and Germany after the Second World War. It's German. No, it's French. No, it's German. It's French. Either way, <laughs> depending which hundred years you're talking about. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> well, let's say that for the last sixty years it was on the on the French yes, side. Yes, it's, it's the French. The French side. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. On the French side, and. Uh, um, as you know, the European Parliament uh, headquarters is, in, is in, based in Strasbourg, mm -hmm. and our meeting is uh, every month there. I didn't realize the I Parliament was in Strasbourg. Stra so it's easier. Strasbourg. It's your hometown. Yes. And uh, the purpose, the main objective, the first objective of the creation of the European Union was to uh, ensure that no more war will happen on the European continent. And I think on, on that criteria, I think the European Union has been very successful. I totally agree with you. I'm anti-war. I love peace. Make love, not war. Uh, what entices you? What keeps you going to join this whole European Union when you think about it, the energies that are expelled in trying to put something together like this? Some people will say that are skeptic. Nah, the history is run too deep. The heritage, the history, there's two, they're two against each other. You're talking France, Europe, uh, France, uh, the UK, uh, Germany, oh my gosh, these guys were at war at one time or the other. Plus, they're all very different in discipline. You must have a headache with this. What yeah. got you to join me? What got me to join? Because you're French. Is that the way around? Yes, I'm French, but uh, as I said, uh, I was born in Strasbourg, and, and That's the, German city, the city of uh, my parents was very much affected. Uh, by the First World War, by would, the Second World War. I would War. imagine, yes. And, and so uh, I'm very proud of uh, having joined this project, which, will, uh, which has managed to bring peace to, uh, to my city and to the whole of Europe. Your father's still uh, alive? He's still my around. father passed away, yes. He would be very proud then for you to see. Can you imagine you're working towards the peace and he, development? He was still alive when I, when I joined when the joined. European Union. And he was, very, of course, very happy that is I it, joined that. Is it very difficult to put all the different conflicting heritage history do you see that I'm sure you see it I mean does it come to play with the politics what? considering you're going forward the development economic development and yet there's the discipline of the Germans vis-a-vis -vis the French vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the British and even the Spanish it must get difficult because everyone is not made the same the EU started in 57 so 12 years after World War II, the end of World War II. Five, and uh, 1957. Yeah, and it started it only with six countries. It was a very small undertaking. You had France, Germany, Italy, Italy. and then Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. And uh, this group of countries first started to work together on, on uh, economic matters. They joined forces for uh, steel and coal. Steel and coal. Steel and coal, which are the key to produce the, yes, yes, yes. the, the arms. So they said, okay. For the Industrial Revolution as well. Right, right. That's the introduction. That's so the gateway. They, they, they worked together. Then they produced a common agriculture policy so that uh, the prices of agricultural products would be the same in the European country. And then little by little, it grew up. The, the UK, Ireland, and Denmark joined in 73. Then we had Greece in 81. Yes. And then... Uh, after uh, democratization of Spain and Portugal, they joined in, in 85, and then we had more expansion. And of course, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, we had about 10 countries from, uh, from Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe the who, joined, who joined in 2004. Yes. You have a new one that's trying to come in, if I'm not mistaken, we had, uh, where you have the problem of Ukraine and you had Poland. Ukraine's still <laughs> ongoing. And the people are saying, no, we're not going to go back to Russia. I want the EU. Correct me if, I'm, if that, this is going that's, on. This is current right that, now that, as we speak. That is a current, that is a current uh, debate. That's true. Uh, I must say that uh, the EU hasn't been uh, completely forthcoming about Ukraine joining the EU. We have offered them a partnership, but we haven't yet uh, made uh, our mind regarding uh, Ukraine being a, a candidate country to join the How join do you participate? EU. Do we apply? Do we ask? You have to apply. You have to, the country has to apply. The country and has the to criteria apply. has to fit. Absolutely. What you can produce, what you can give, what you can bring on the table. Well, uh, there, there are 
couple of, of uh, uh, key criteria mm -hmm. is, is uh, democracy and respect of human rights. Oh, uh, difficult question <laughs> right there. That, right is, there. that uh, disqualifies many, but go ahead. That Venezuela, is well, I want to join. Cannot. <laughs> go uh, ahead. You have, for, for example, regarding uh, uh, human rights, uh, you have to abolish the death penalty. No oh. EU member state has the death penalty in its uh, constitution. Interesting, interesting. Uh, and you, have, you need a market economy. But when I say a market economy, basically any new EU member has to adopt the whole EU legislation. And that is something like 100,000 pages of, of uh, legal documents. Yes, yes, yes. So they have to review all their policy, competition policy, procurement. Abide. Public they have to abide. And they have to abide by all EU, EU rules. So it's a very long process. And it took, took nearly 10 years for a country like Poland, uh, Poland Czech yes. Republic, Hungary, etc., to, to, uh, to, to uh, adapt their domestic legislation so that it is compatible and in conformity with EU uh, uh, rules. Can we call it a federation already at this point? Not yet. We cannot. We cannot. Why? The difference is, but the politics are in order. The disciplines are already in order. The standards are already set, the criterion. I think, I think. Uh, it's quite strict uh, with, with over, with voluminous 100,000 pages, like have, you were saying. We have a very thick uh, legislation. It's very strict. Yes. 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 Because that legislation. But why not federal? Environment, energy, uh, migration, uh, it's not, it's not federal because, uh, as I said, we, uh, the, the, the integration is not at the same level as a federal government. You allow the f sovereign states to stay independent. Yes, yes. How do you stay independent and yet federal? It is, it is, yeah, it's a bit complicated. It is a challenge. It yes, is it an is everyday challenge. challenge. I, I, uh, I would illustrate that with one example, which is foreign policy. And that's an, uh, an issue where I, I'm directly involved. Uh, because I, I'm here also representing European uh, foreign policy. Mm -hmm. Any uh, policy or any decision regarding uh, the EU needs to be taken at unanimity. All. As, as far as foreign policy is concerned. The tyranny of the majority or nothing at all. Right. If you go into uh, trade policy, which I mentioned before, yes. then we don't need uh, unanimity. You go with qualified majority voting. So that means that each country has, has a certain weight, mm -mm. which is uh, uh, Not all in, need in line with the size of the population and the size of the economy. All right. Uh, but for foreign policy, we are still at the level of uh, unanimity. And of course, that is, that is uh, very challenging. And of course, that's a big difference between the European Union and the United States, mm -hmm. where uh, foreign policy decisions are it's taken one. by the White House. Period. Uh, 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 period. That's it. In the EU, we have a foreign policy chief. She is a lady called uh, Catherine Ashton. By the way, for example, she is currently uh, the chief negotiator for the nuclear issue with Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, although there are, there are other partners that you have, yes, yes. All, all the partners, but she is the, she is the, the front the, speaker. The, the yeah. front speaker. Uh, so when she wants to announce, to make an announcement about a, a major policy, she needs to get the agreement of all the 28 member, member states the before she speaks. Point. So that is that is quite a challenge, but, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Yes, we, yes. we do have uh, common decisions. I have one last question when it comes to the EU, the combination or the autonomy or how you created it. It's financing or what we call the central banks. It has individual central banks. America has one federal bank. The EU has it allows sovereign independence and to a certain extent financial independence. Well, first of all, it's not all the uh, European countries who have um, adopted the euro. We have mm. 17, 17 countries out of the 28 who are a member of what we call the eurozone. The eurozone. There's a difference. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, that's all the, <laughs> the beauty and the complexity of the European Union. It's, it, we have a sort of a, a different scenario depending on the policy. If you, if you talk about Schengen, we talk about the visa. Yes, yes, sir. We have one group of countries. If you talk about the euro, we have another group of, of countries. So it's, it's, it's very complex. So it's very difficult for me to explain that to, to Ambassador, to the we're at the bottom of the hour. We're going to have to take a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, if you've been listening, the complexity of how the union is created and how it stays together, the glue that keeps them together, is the ability to speak to each other while respecting each other's independence. Nevertheless, 
they come together for a singular purpose to go forward, not to stagnate or go backwards or even aggravate. What they require is to go forward. Now, why are they here in the Philippines? Why do we have Ambassador Ledo? Simply because there is a contribution and an ongoing partnership. Now, if you stay with us, we will go back to the first topic I mentioned, which is basically the Malampaya. How does that come into, into to round in, in this whole thing? Well, stay tuned and find out and see how the EU and the Philippines can work together for what? Progress, electricity, employment. Gee, it just doesn't stop. We'll be right back.